So I have multiple well tanks hooked up to this system. It's good to have uh, backup tanks for a lot of reasons um, in case you have, first of all, by having more than one tank, you can increase your pressure on the pressure switch and without re really costing you too much capacity. Because as you increase the pressure on your pressure switch, you have to increase the air pressure in this tank and ultimately it reduces the capacity of the tank. So if you have a second tank or a third tank, you can get more. So in this case, I have uh, three 20 gallon tanks. Each one has a capacity of about five gallons. Um, and I have it set at 40, 39 PSI is when it kicks on, 54 PSI it kicks off right now. So I you know, reduced the high, the high end screw on the pressure switch to try to get a lower maximum, but I increased the main screw on the pressure switch to get a higher minimum. So the pump doesn't have to kick on very often because it has 15 gallons to work with here, but you always have a pressure in the 40s, which is beneficial for uh, my reverse osmosis system for one thing. So I got these tanks on Craigslist and uh, sometimes you have to clean them up, paint them. If they're not too old, they can be in decent shape. You gotta make sure that it can hold air pressure first and if that's good to go, then you gotta make sure it'll hold water pressure and of course you wanna make sure it's not waterlogged. So when the tank has uh, been emptied, and if it still feels heavy and there's water sloshing around, that means there's a problem with the, uh, the liner. And Generally speaking, in most cases, it's a throwaway in that situation. You can get a brand new tank on Amazon for about $137. So if, you buy, if you're buying one used and it's got uh, a busted bladder, it's probably not worth messing with it. But if you do have one that's you know, only a couple years old and you got a good, really good deal on it, I say why not have a couple of them. In this case, it's a, a Flotec and it has a plastic flange with a female one inch. So I used a couple of one inch male adapters, uh, glued them together with a piece of one inch PVC. And uh, I would really like to uh, screw plastic into plastic in this particular case. I really wouldn't want to put a stainless steel nipple into that female plastic fitting. Um, so what I did was I actually wrapped these with four layers of thick uh, Teflon tape and then I painted it with a layer of thread compound. And it gives you a, a perfect seal every time. I mean it's a little extra work, it's a little messy, but it's worth it. You don't want to have any trips. And then I, I probably had to adjust this after it was installed to make sure that my drain was at the lowest point. So I probably just hit this with my torch to turn it a little bit to make sure that my drain came out at the low spot. And uh, this is a quarter turn ball valve uh, boiler drain. Very convenient. You hook up a hose and you can connect multiple tanks through the hose for you know temporary reasons if you need to do some testing. Uh, or if you want to drain one of these or you want to run pressure. Uh, for example, I used my, my pressure tank to drive my well. I just hooked up a hose on a stick and turned on the pressure and it just flooded the uh, sand and allowed me to just push this PVC well point down to the bottom. So it's been very convenient to have these hose boiler drain valves on every tank. And of course this tank here is integrated with the pump so you don't have as much control as far as like separating, isolating the tank, swapping up the tank, that sort of thing. But it's a 2013 model. I don't expect to be having problems with it. And I, so I put a drain over here. That's the best I could do. And, uh, and it's got an isolation. You know, I can isolate this from the system. Um, and if I have a you know, backup pump hooked up here, I can just isolate this whole section and work on that. Or I can isolate this whole section to work on the other side, which I have a tank and a hookup where I can put a pump as well. So this tank you can isolate here. And this where you, could, you actually could hook up another pump would be isolated here. Both of these tanks were used, and this one in particular is from 1998, so it's got some years on it. It's a teal. I repainted it, and uh, I found with, when it comes to tanks, uh, they can collect some muck in the bottom of the or on the inside of the bladder. So one of the ways that you can attempt to try to clean that out is to run the tank completely empty, hook up the pressure, and just open your ball valve a little bit and run you know maybe a pint of water in there and then run it right out the drain close that then open this up put another pint in shut it down and then open this up and every time you do that it's going to push the bladder up and then release it and it's going to collapse and when that happens a lot of like gunk and crap will come out of there so if you do that a bunch of times you might be able to get the majority of the crap out of your tank and then when you're when you're hooking up your tank you want to make sure that your pressure on the air is a couple of pounds 
below the minimum setting of your pump. So in this case, I have my tank at 33 and my pump kicks on at 30, well, in this case, it kicks on at 39, but it was set for 34. And the idea here is that if you have your pressure higher than your minimum tank, your minimum pump setting, you're going to collapse that bladder every single time. So you'll find a sudden drop in water pressure and then your pump kicks on and it collapses the bladder and then it inflates the bladder. So what that's going to do is that's going to kick up a bunch of crap into your system every time. So you, you might end up with a little bit more murky water. So that's one of the reasons. Now on the other hand, if you have your pressure too low, then what will happen is when, you're, when your uh, pump kicks on, it can actually stretch the bladder um, and stress it out. As far as I understand, I never had that happen. I had, a, I had a tank that had an air leak and it was you know running real low on air pressure and yet the bladder never was was never damaged so I don't know if that's actually a major issue but one thing's for sure if you don't have a lot of pressure on this the the uh, air bladder can't push on the tank push on the on the water bladder to push that out instead you end up with the actual stress of the pressure inside the tank is the only thing that pushes the water back out besides the water pressure itself so you're not that's that's a and you end up with a waterlogged tank essentially is is with that when and basically you're not going to get as much capacity you're not going to get as much performance um, so you definitely want to make sure your air pressure is is good to go on these tanks before you uh, hook up a used one and and for brand new tanks of course you want to do the same you want to make sure that it holds pressure when you and, and make sure you adjust your pressure below the minimum set point of your pump this tank actually has a uh, a steel female one inch on the inside it's kind of like a one inch elbow down there so rather than using plastic PVC like I did on the other tank I'm using a, a one inch steel nipple um, stainless steel actually it turns out that at a lot of supply houses you can get stainless steel at a re pretty reasonable price so in this case I have some somewhat uh, of a salty kind of water it's got a little bit of sodium chloride and it tends to build corrosion so I wanted to go stainless instead of galvanized in hopes that it will maintain. I mean, I've taken some, some well tanks apart from this house that were more than halfway filled with de uh, deposits. So I thought, go, go stainless steel. Um, it's easy to work with. It's super strong. It mates up fine with galvanized. I used uh, four wraps of heavy-duty Teflon, and then I painted it with a uh, great white compound, just like I do all my joints. Tighten it up good, and I didn't have any problems with leaks. So... I do recommend if you're looking at your supply house, don't be afraid to buy. It. Spend an extra dollar or two on getting a stainless steel nipple. They're not that expensive. For whatever reason, uh, stainless steel at a lot of supply houses have as actually cheaper than brass. And uh, so I've been using them from from time to time in certain places. I got a stainless steel adapter here. It's a uh, three quarter inch to one quarter inch bushing, and it was cheaper than the brass version. Uh, I looked that up and said, well, is that going to be a problem to to have brass and stainless? Is there going to be some kind of a you know, uh, electrical corrosion problem, and so far I haven't seen that at all. And it's been hooked up for almost a year, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. But I do, I do like the stainless fittings. I use them on the oil system as well on the bottom of my oil tanks. And uh, you can, the nice thing about stainless steel is it's real strong. Galvanizing stainless steel is super strong. So if you have a situation where you need strength, it's good to keep that in mind.